actually uh, starting already now soon, I think, for the new year, for 2024. And um, I think you might have heard about the, the speech contest. And uh, yeah, I, I can't really get into each one of them because I only have nine minutes left, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so this is something I know that uh, Albania has started to, to also have, was it this right? And I think also Uganda, I think it is. And Spain. And Spain. So we'll see when we, we can continue in the, in the Scandinavia as well, maybe. And then <clears throat> another very good uh, project is the Artists for Peace for Children, where children are invited to uh, paint uh, under a theme. This, this year, uh, last year was my dream. <clears throat> so um, this is also, I think, a project that we could uh, start quite, e quite easy, mm -hmm. actually, in, in other countries. And this year was also really nice because they made a calendar of all the children's <coughs> paintings that they did as a fundraising. And I thought that was really but nice. Mitty brought an um, um, example of that and, oh. and also some other uh, merchandise really that they oh. use. So we will uh, during lunch display it on one of the tables so you can then... Very nice. Mm -hmm. Can we purchase? Uh -huh. it's not can as well. We can purchase as well. Okay, great. And then um, another one, I think this is supposed to also be a continue, continuous thing, the Women, Faith and Family Conference, is that right? And I think this is annual. the annual. How many years has it gone up? I think about three years. Three years, <laughs> right. Yeah, so um, let's continue. I All think, right. pardon? Oh, five minutes. Okay, let me go. Okay, we have had her story twice uh, during the year with Nargis Moman Kastani right before Christmas and she's actually invited now to come to Japan. If you were in Cyprus, you had the chance to meet her. She's a very strong, passionate advocate for, for women and girls' rights from Afghanistan. <clears throat> and um, so she's invited on a speaking tour, actually, <clears throat> in Japan in the summer sometime. To, to give her experience uh, of growing up or, or having to leave also Afghanistan. And, yeah. And then we also had Aisha uh, speak about her life. Aisha is from Somalia. We also had the Eastern uh, Harmony in the Family workshop. This is Johanna Corson's big project, and she was hoping to do that as a, by, um, every other year. And we don't know now. We only had it one time, but it was really appreciated by the people coming there. Okay, then the, these are some of the other uh, events we've had. I want to move on actually to, to the teacher. Pavi, I want to mention though, um, because uh, Pavi has, is the Women Federation leader in Finland, and uh, she has had quite a few meetings with other women organizations. And she was actually asked to speak in the middle of the summer at this, uh, I don't know if you can see the name of it, but it's, a, it's an umbrella organization with 100 different associations. And she was actually asked to talk about Women Federation at that meeting. And uh, she's also uh, been doing a lot of um, meetings with the Syrian um, women's group in Finland. And then in Norway, we have, uh, Big This has established a relationship with this. It's just on a very local level. Yeah, yeah, but what is it? Continuous. Okay, great. Okay, we're moving on. Now here we have Ireland have done uh, things here as well in Sweden. Yeah. Anyway, I want to go to the future. Let's see. I'm sorry, Ireland. But let us welcome our new team in Ireland. Yes. This we cannot forget. <laughs> Elisabetta's daughter Deborah and my daughter Linda has been developing this Mommy Matters. Two minutes left. 
okay? And uh, I know that they are now moving into calling it Mommy's Village, I think. And I think uh, they don't know exactly how, the, how they should um, do it for the year, but we will hear from them, I'm sure. Work in progress. Uh, work, in progress. work in progress, right. Uh, and I just want to mention I, Iceland. They are actually uh, supporting a Christian ministry for many years, a farming project in, in Nigeria. So, how do I get to the future? It's a, such a necessity for us in these small countries, which is really nice, actually. We're going to try to uh, celebrate international days. Now we're going to do it in Copenhagen in March, I hope, with some of the, or, the, the original missionaries from Japan. Noriko is coming, so that will be very exciting. She doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> she does know she's coming, though, to Denmark. Anyway... And then, uh, yeah, continue to network on local level. But this is a, a big uh, project. We continue. No, no. We, Women, Peace, and Security Conference in Finland in August 2024. And we have had a little bit different thoughts now, me and Haley, that we're going to do it together with Estonia. Mm -hmm. And this will be so exciting because both Denmark and Sweden, we have a criminal past, you can say. <laughs> with Estonia, <laughs> because we have been uh, during 1600, 1500, actually Denmark even before that, uh, dominated and had war against it, dominated and they were under the Swedish and Danish rule. So there's a lot of peace, um, zero. <laughs> peace and it's, uh, like sisterhood ceremonies and things like that we could do. So this will be very exciting. Estonia is only one and a half hour with ferry away from Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So the conference will be in Helsinki. This will be very exciting, actually. Yes, mm -hmm. so that is it for the North oh. region. <laughs> She shared a lot about it because uh, many guests and the second generation work on this project and especially the speaker, the presenter were second generation that uh, decided to appear, mm -hmm. stand up. And the topic was uh, uh, about the professional work in women, how women can succeed in professional work. Okay, next. These are uh, the participants and the speakers. On 21st October, the Feminist Federation invited Women of Federation Spain to share about this <laughs> important and heavy issue that is feminine genital mutilation. So they explain what we are doing uh, to help solve this problem, especially reporting about the UN activity in Vienna. And uh, our uh, peace prize, we, two mother gave uh, at the... Uh, at the um, war is here. And uh, the event was also uh, for raise funds to support uh, the TV Foundation that work against uh, <coughs> genital mutilation in Kenya. Next. These are the future. Next. Future plan. So they are organizing, planning to have education presentation of educational curriculum in Madrid, already they have the date, mm -hmm. less than one month soon. An event in cooperation with the Third Millennium UNESCO Foundation, proposed by the President in Spain, so mm, means uh, to cooperate with uh, such a very big organization, not yet decided the date. An event on gender ideology, Valencia, in Valencia, uh, because I know they are specializing on this topic with the help of her son. Okay, next uh, let's go to some or Portugal or Italy. Um, 
Okay, Portugal and after something about Spain. Okay, next. Yes, the, maybe you already know they are very professional in organizing this workshop online on education. Okay. On education, especially on moral value, connected with the Portuguese speaking countries in Mozambique, uh, in, in, in uh, Brazil, and several countries in Africa too. They are doing this seminar that takes uh, several appointments. Uh, involved with uh, Isabella Costa, that is a professional counselor, and uh, Marta also, I know, is working a lot to <laughs> give her support, and uh, she also giving lecture, and uh, we translate. So anyway, uh, the, had the, the rich, uh, high success, and uh, so they are going to. They did in, uh, in last year, and I, I think already they started this year again. Uh, literacy for children, also this online in Mozambique, June 22, I think, I don't know. Okay, next. <laughs> uh, oh, this was a very high level event that Marta had the chance to participate with uh, other ambassador of peace in uh, annual Lusophone Gala Award. You see the way they dress, <laughs> mm -hmm. the very high level VIP were there and uh, you see Women Federation logo. Mm. Okay. Also, Women Leadership Education, uh, they held a conference on the topic of how to prevent cancer, basically. Mm, no, it's not this yes, one. Yes, it is. It, it, it is. is. Okay. With Latin America. Oh, in October. <coughs> With the Latin America. Okay, so this was all online, right? Online. <coughs> it's important our health, no? So, educate women to take care of their health is also important. Okay, next. Oh, plan for 2024, maybe, okay. In uh, February, they are going to start again, Teacher for Peace, uh, already started in February. March, uh, to celebrate the International Women's Day, in, with the total integrity and role of young people and contributing to Italian society. <coughs> April and May, Women uh, Anniversary Celebration, June Celebration of International Children's Day, anyway, to all the day connected to UN organization. Uh, and, and so November also to the day for the elimination of violence against women. Okay, Marta. Okay, basically Marta, they are doing very much a voluntary activity in cooperation with other local organizations. So they uh, raised funds for uh, children in Gaza. They found an organization that was going there to bring this uh, intended help. And uh, sometimes they attend an important conference with VIP in Malta. They are invited next to be loser. So I'm the last Italy I have to make. Uh, okay, these are Dalmadia um, and uh, other big festivals in Malta. Okay, let's go to Italy. <laughs> Quickly. Quickly. <laughs> Yes, we start, uh, so we have uh, activity in Bergamo, Padova, and Roma. And then some activity national level online. Bergamo is very active and uh, they have a, lo a lot of, about 30 members to try and pay. And Padova less members, <laughs> just three or four, but they do activity with the local city hall and there are all wings in the street and so on. I work in at a national level, this was a conference in March at the European Parliament on the topic you can see. Um, I had the support of uh, several nuns, uh, and this one is following out, so Martin, this one also. The, she attended the conference on dignity I had, and also the last conference I had this time. Uh, yeah, so I raised this issue, I raised this issue that is very hard, but raised attention of many people. Oh, you, you will see after, <laughs> here, all the trees that we planted. Wow. In Colomatia, there is one with, uh, from uh, Spain, and another from Bergamo. Anyway, you will see. We involved the kindergarten nearby. They came to celebrate springtime and to receive some knowledge about how to take care of the nature and so. We did the same with VIP. Okay, next. Then we had this uh, workshop online. 
we we asked to pay a fee to join so it was not free it was the first time <laughs> my daughter cooperate she's a counselor for coaching mindfulness educator i am too so we raised this uh, issue how to help women to understand their inner value that god gave us and it was a journey about this topic we will consider uh, not many people participate but again the nuns subscribe and attend it and uh, Robertina also, <laughs> she likes, she enjoys, she's here now. Okay, next. How many sessions did you have? Three. Mm. Especially on the first part, with the meeting, the first part. Oh, then, uh, uh, this recently, uh, just uh, some weeks ago, I had this conference on the European Parliament, Women of Faith and their commitment to peace. This also was, I, I didn't expect zero, okay, it's the last one. Oh no, 24, okay. I didn't expect to, to have uh, the whole almost full, about 60 people were there and 30 people online because this topic was strictly religious topic. How to say? I invite leaders from uh, this organization, I mean, the Jewish, Jewish people, Muslim people, and uh, evangelists and Catholic, and yeah, um, so a Baha'i. Uh, they felt so much. Uh, uh, warm atmosphere and hope for the future because my last word was that with god's help we can make the world of peace and i report mm -hmm. about her mother and uh, her shortly her life and the uh, sunak peace prize summit and so on okay next oh, oh no okay that's gone 24 yes we are organizing together with upf a conference at uh, we hope in vatican looking for mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or in the senate um, I became part of the European Women Lobby. I was invited to join in. Um, so I am part of this branch. I want to see how it's possible to work at the Brussels, Brussels level at the European Parliament because they are especially working on, on there. They are promoting a law to protect women at the European level, in the European Parliament. And I like because them because especially they work against prostitution. They don't want prostitution will be legalized as a, a work. Because somebody say, it's a work. Just uh, let them pay taxes and that's a work. <laughs> oh, so uh, so uh, stupid things. Huh? And they're also against uh, su maternity sub subrogacy. They are against this. And they are collecting a lot of women organization and uh, some families also, but they are more um, center or somehow right side. So they are pushing in this direction, so I like this. Or some idea is to promote membership, uh, having more at the national level um, contact directly with the members. Before it was Family Federation sending information to Women Federation charter. Now I want to do directly also because of this issue. And okay, I will organize in Chiani Palamattia some spring festival to talk about the environment. <laughs> Thank you. Incredible. Wow. A lot of inspiring events. Thank you. Now we'll just move quickly. Do you want to do your set? Yeah. If you, if you need to punch somewhere, you can just start. Ah, not otherwise. Which is, uh, bon, but we have to go other way. Uh, France, Belgium, Luxembourg, Netherlands, and Monaco. But Monaco, there is nobody. And uh, just to say, Luxembourg, I didn't receive anything because her sister is quite sick in this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she did not really manage to do anything in, in 2023. So it's good to have a thought about her. It's Heinil Frank. And then uh, she has a cancer, and uh, which cannot be healed. So it's very difficult for her for the moment. So, um, yeah, so I will start with Belgium. So we have uh, our national um, representative is um, Colette, Colette Pilligan or Colette Delrue, I mean Colette Pilligan. And uh, just they started with uh, beginning the humanitarian project in Nepal. They want to invest more uh, in Nepal. There is a, a project guided by this uh, ambassador for peace. I mean, she's a member, basically, close to Colette. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, because she was sick in 2023, uh, 2022, she couldn't manage to do this anniversary. So she did it in the beginning of last year. 
But then, because of the Nepal project, she was able to visit the ambassador of, to Nepal in Belgium. So they invited him as well, so he's speaking this event also of this uh, uh, 30th anniversary of, uh, of Women Federation. So it, it is good for her. So then, of course, she's visiting regularly, almost every month, she's going to the conferences in the European Parliament, because her daughter is also working in the European Parliament. So, so I just want to say, I don't want to say all of them, but you can see every month, almost she's going, only in holidays she's not going, but she's going every month to, uh, to this European Parliament to attend. And one of the goals to attend this, um, this conference is, is to meet deputies, you know, to meet at least one deputy with who she can work. So that's what she tried with one of them, which I think from Spain. But uh, there is a law now, it becomes more strict in the European Parliament, which is um, the lobbies and NGO must be registered now in the European Parliament. There must be a transparency register before participating as invited guests. Before we could manage to do some, some uh, event with some other deputy in the European Parliament. Now you cannot do that because mm -hmm. as, uh, you have to register, you have to be accepted mm -hmm. as an NGO to be able to, to even uh, attend, I mean, or to be able to do some event in the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. So this is why it's difficult. So she, she thought to this, this lady she could do, but finally not. So they try, um, yeah, they, they, they try to, to register this uh, Women's Federation for the European Parliament. They submission uh, last year in October, submission of a request to obtain the transparency register statute for entry and organization of events inside the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. If you are not accepted, you cannot do any event in the European Parliament now. Mm -hmm. Because I think they want to make it strict, or I mean, you know, maybe about that point. Huh? So they did it, but it was not accepted. Women's mm -hmm. Federation was not accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, they, so they will do it again this year. Mm -hmm. That's what she said. For, for, uh, to, towards 2024, they will try again to kind of register again. Mm -hmm. They have to fill up some paper. They want to know why they have not been accepted. Mm -hmm. So they, they will do it again. I know that UPF is doing the same as well. Mm -hmm. So let's see. So for uh, Belgium in 2024, so they will continue with Nepal project. And also they will do, um, oh yeah, we want to organize a meeting with uh, MITI for the West region, because we feel we have to kind of uh, see what we can, how we can go forward yeah, with the West region. Um, and then uh, we have an impact, of course, in Cyprus, even though she didn't come collect to Cyprus, but there was one lady from uh, Belgium who came, right? So I gave her the address, so I gave her the contact, and she went to visit her. So kind of keep contact with the ladies we invited in Cyprus. Minutes. Okay, right. Uh, and then the Netherlands, sorry, in Netherlands, I really don't have so much too, that because Rita as well last year had up and down, also physically not so easy, uh, but she said that she keep the 1% love sharing, it's very deep in her own heart since uh, 2002, I think, and Women's Peace Academy, which is still going on, 105, 105, but of course it's getting, it's, it's kind of a small, right, small way. And, and then uh, she wants to focus more on UN days for 2024, right, and 1% love share, of course. And then she asked, uh, my question is, can we use the curriculum already? So, mm. question back then. so for France, we go fast. So just to say that uh, France is, of course, uh, I try to develop in different regions, not only Paris, central Paris, 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 but we have in the north, we have in Brittany, we have one sister, we try in Lyon, I mean, if you know, but we have also this region, you know, we have La Réunion, Martinique, Guyana, Guadeloupe, it's also the department mm. of France. Mm. It belongs to the end of the French as well. So anyway, I don't take care of this <laughs> too much. Right? Um, so this is a committee, and then we have Women's Peace Academy during the year, similar than Earth Story, but I found it very good. We had also Women's Peace Academy before with young women, we had experts, you know, in talents. So we want to continue as well. Um, then we have one day, we had a, um, a seminar together with UPF about um, uh, vision and principle of peace. For two days, we did it together, 
So we invited, you know, our guests from different uh, culture, different uh, background, women and men. So it was very good. We did it together for two days. So we want to continue this year. Uh, well, okay, I go too fast. Right. We had also a series of conference by Zoom on principle of peace. So this is by Laurent Ladous. But I will say it's very good, but a little bit too academic <laughs> for me. <laughs> so not always easy for women who wants to have more artistic relationship mm -hmm. to really attend this kind of conference mm -hmm. based on the prince uh, of unification thought, in fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was very good, many good topics on it. Yeah. So it was once every month. And then we have, of course, UN Days. UN Days is really a, a time to do partnership with other organizations. That's what we try to do. All the UN Days from last year, we did it with another association, which is, uh, who came to Cyprus as well, Feza Shaka. So we really organized, because she can bring also her own network. And uh, it's always nice to do it together with some other organizations. So we did it for International Day of Women. Also, we did it International Day of Peace in the north part of France. And there was five organizations as partnership. Mm -hmm. And we said it was really a great victory. Because you can see on the invitation, even the city hall was there. I mean, you can see all of the Women Federation and here. And it was organized by Fumio van Adervelt. And uh, together also with Belgium. You know, Lille is close to Belgium, so they are kind of uh, also together. So it was really successful. And one of, of things is that this uh, piece of, piece of bri bridge of peace, sorry, uh, is that they come together and they do things for, for one year together as a project. And next year, they have to expose what they have been doing for one year together. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, something interesting. So then uh, International Day for Elimination, so we did it last year. So of course, in partnership again with some other association and one from Belgium as well. And then for this year, okay, 2024, uh, we want to increase membership. We have membership, paid membership, different categories of membership, um, but we want to do it more because we think it's very important mm -hmm. to have a, a good membership as an NGO. Uh, I want to continue to visit regions to stimulate sisters in different parts of, of France. Uh, networking and partnership UN days. So I'm invited on the 9th of March uh, with 50 women. Mm. So we have a round table. This is also organized by FESA and some other organization. So there will be some uh, first ladies, ex -form, former first ladies or Tunisia, no, Algeria, and from ministers. So let's see. Mm. There will be a journalist asking for questions for everyone, so let's see. Um, and then there will be a Education to Peace uh, with UPF. So we will do again once, uh, zero, okay. <laughs> <laughs> once, uh, once, uh, once a month. So next Saturday we have one where we invite our, our guests as well. Women's Peace Academy, we carry on. And of course, we want to involve more youth, the young members, to come. And it started already. So my, one of my goals is to visit or to <coughs> develop a personal relationship with the youth and to see what they want, what is their talent, what, uh, where they wish to work. And already I have a few, on the 30th of March, maybe two or three youth working together to make this event of the International Day of Women. So mm -hmm. let's see. And then, of course, humanitarian project. And I would like to carry on with 1% of share. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brigitte. So now, from the West, we go to the Central region, which will be... Can everybody see the screen? Oh, okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Yeah, I'm here the, with the uh, smoke smoke to go to the car to the back. Okay. I'm here with Magda and Carmen and I will be um, giving the Central Europe report. Um, we have ten countries and uh, Liechtenstein is the only country where we don't have an active chapter. And these are the leaders of each country. And uh, most of our Chapters are active, we're very diverse. I think out of the 10 countries, only two countries share a common language. And there's also a lot of um, cultures, East and West Germany. 
and um, that is part of the challenges that we have but it's also our strength and uh, even with reporting we're still trying to get to the level that uh, Morico has encouraged us to be at and each country also has its own challenges so for example in Germany a lot of our members are old they're not always to uh, they're not always able to pay their membership fees but they will still like to be involved they would still like to receive reports and be invited and most countries get their funding through their membership fees and donations Okay, so I will only report on five countries today. Um, Austria, 2023, they had a Peace Through Education online series. They also had an International Day of Peace lecture. And they collaborated with U UPF, IAYSP, and Family Federation. And they also had a fundraising project for Armenia. And then um, some of their goals for this year, they are going to continue with a Peace to Education online series. And they're going to celebrate the United Nations uh, Day of the Family Conference. And they will observe um, International Women's Day. And then they have a planned three country meeting in uh, Buda Budapest with Hungary and Slovakia. And then Germany for 2023, they had 92 members, two thirds of which are paying. And Germany gets its funding through membership fees and we also have friends that donate to us. And the projects they supported last year was um, Central African Republic, a Bagando project. This is for schools, agriculture and microcredit for women. And then they also sponsored events for Ukrainian uh, women in Germany. And um, they donated a total of 1,800 euros last year and also helped with um, travel for members. And in last year, um, Germany had, the Penta had um, an event at the Pentecost Festival in April and this was also in collaboration with Women's Federation for World Peace Ukraine. And there was a lot of meetings held between Women's Federation Ukraine and uh, Germany. And then um, we also have uh, active chapters in different parts of Germany. So there were events in Munich, in Regensburg, in Gießen, and mm -hmm. in Stuttgart. And for 2024, um, we're going to have our annual meeting um, next month in, Five minutes. in Gießen. And there we also will discuss um, fund, funding and find ways um, to increase our funding. And our youth focus for 2024 is to attract, educate, and retain um, the youth. And then we also plan to collaborate with uh, further with Ukraine women in Germany and with uh, Professor Natkis Mamanzai and also with the Ahmadiyya Muslim women's community. And then uh, we also want to plan an event for the German-Brazilian Women for Peace. And then Hungary, last year they had a Bridges and Walls lecture program with UPF. They had their annual planning meeting and they had an origami peace program with Ukraine families. They also had a peace road with UPF and IAYSP, and this was also a three um, nation event. And then they had international Color My Heart project uh, preparation, and they appointed new peace ambassadors. For 2024, so far, they are planning a personality development and happy family con conference 
in April in Budapest. And this will be um, in collaboration with Women Federation Austria and Slovakia. <coughs> And for Slovakia 2023, they had 35 members, three of which were new, and they, uh, they make their money through annual fees of 25 euros, and Family Federation contributes between 1,500 and 2,000 euros annually. They had uh, monthly prayers for peace. They also had, on International Women's Day, they had a history of women's movement in Europe and the Middle East. And they also had panel discussions on what sex, what sex education does, what sex education do our children need. Mm -hmm. And then um, they also were part of the Peace Road um, in collaboration with UPF uh, and Women Federation Austria and Hungary. For 2024, they are planning an interfaith week in collaboration with UPF and then also a woman wage peace for Israel and Palestine and then a seminar on non-violent communication in family and society. They're also planning a get to know our neighbors with, uh, which will be between Austria, Slovakia and Hungary in Budapest. And they are also planning a sisterhood ceremony with Belarus. And then for Ukraine, I only have uh, 2023. And uh, among the many, many um, projects, they had um, collaboration with child.ua. And this was a Christmas celebration for internally displaced children. And then they also had a Shoes for Children event where they bought shoes for 50 children. They also had a preparation and gifting of food packages for 500 uh, Ukrainian families, and these were 25 euros each. And they collaborated with Women Federation for World Peace Germany and uh, many other countries within the region. And thank you. <laughs> year as many years are in the Middle East but uh, as you know we have the war in uh, between Israel and Hamas now and uh, that's expanded to many other conflicts it's even affecting Lebanon where I'm living so uh, it's a, a great time of uh, calamities and dis desperation shall I say but then we also understand the need for peace because of this so um, during this time, many European brothers and sisters helped the Middle East by making donations. So we were able to give humanitarian aid in Morocco when they had the earthquake in Morocco. Um, this sister here, she's an ambassador for peace, uh, uh, Habiba, Habiba, I forget her last name now, Ayu, Ayu. So she organized all of this. We gave, uh, we gave money, and then she organized his food and helped for the villages that were destroyed, basically, by the earthquake in Morocco. And then also, in Turkey, as you know, we had a lot of cooperation, especially uh, Women's Federation International and Women's Federation uh, Korea made donations. And there's no picture of it here, but what they did See, what happened was when the earthquake happened, the people lost their homes, and they had to relocate. And they would relocate to smaller villages in the surrounding area, which could not, didn't have the facilities for so many families. Villages that maybe had 100 families now have 500 or 1,000 families. So we built containers that were toilets, with toilets and showers in them to place in the community. So they made six of these containers. And uh, we did lots of other work too, but that's what Women's Federation did for um, the earthquake victims. And these are our members we went down many times. We also built a school, school classrooms. Many people helped for, but that's what Women's Federation did. As you know, uh, Fusayo Irikura 
is working in Jer uh, Jordan, outside Amman, in the refugee area. She has a center for children now. She has two centers, actually, one for women and one for children. The one for children does a character education and literacy program, Arabic literacy program. Now, this is extremely important because what happens to these refugee children, and I, I want to help you to understand how important this is, they have tons of refugees from Iraq, from um, Syria, and of course Palestine from years and years ago. These kids leave their home countries. They don't necessarily know how to uh, go to, they didn't go to school maybe for three or four or five years. Mm. So they're really backwards. They go into the school and because they're nine years old, they go into the fourth grade, but they don't know how to read and write. Mm. So they go to school for a year or two, they struggle, they hate it, and they leave school, they go to work, and they're on the streets. Mm. And they're targeted by the extremist groups to join the extremist mm -hmm. organizations. So they're doing literacy program for these kids to teach them proper Arabic so that they can get integrated into the schools again. And many of them got awards last year because they went to the top of their class. Because it's not just, you know, these young guys are really great. They're teaching the young boys. And they're not just teaching them Arabic, but they're teaching them character education. Also, they're doing education for the women. They meet them every week. They do like a character education. I mean, like mother's training, they call it. And now they're doing health education for them. They have a very um, prestigious school, Islam, not school, hospital, Islamic hospital. The, the doctor, the head doctor is coming and giving them health education. They're going to get certificates at, mm -hmm. as health ambassadors for peace. So she's doing a lot of good work with cooperation with many good agencies. And then we have our project. So this is in New Delhi, India. This is Yamanori, Etsuko Yamanori, one of the original 10 Japanese sisters assigned to Afghanistan. She started in India and they created a school in India years and years ago in 97 when we couldn't go into Afghanistan. Then all together we went into Afghanistan. We did many women's federation projects. Now the Taliban has taken over. So again, we can't go in India into Afghanistan. So she personally went back to India from Japan, and she stayed in India for six months. And based on the foundation we had from years ago from the school, she started the Afghan Women's Cultural Center in, Af in New Delhi, India. So we started with a library for the girls. They have computer classes. They have, uh, this is a design class, and they have sewing class. They have English class, and now they have a cosmetics class. So they're, the most important thing is that every day the staff comes, they start reading mother's autobiography. One page every day. Mm. Also, the girls, the staff girls, these ones in the front, are learning also now not to receive the character education, but to teach the character education. Mm -hmm. So I've been giving them that every week. Last year, every week, now they watch recordings of my teaching and they're learning how to teach it themselves. And they're doing very, very well. So all these girls speak English, and every year, like now they have 35 students, so every six months they have not always a new group, but, and they create a community. It's mm -hmm. a community of support and heart. So last year, a few of these girls, they created their own business after they graduated from the program. So uh, we're really trying to uplift the girls, create the community of heart that Father talked about, and to really get, empower them. Whoops, sorry. So uh, Iran is also doing work. They have online programs. The sisters got excited that uh, they wanted to gather people together. So a few, about five of the sister members uh, got together and they're doing online education every month and this year they want to do in person So that's quite exciting mm -hmm. for Iran actually and Cyprus had a year of VIP outreach We all saw at um, the <coughs> Cyprus event the European event ha that happened to be in Cyprus Which was very helpful for for Zoe 
Zoe uh, Bennett is the president of Women's Federation Middle East and North Africa. She uh, was able to reach out to the president. This is the president of Cyprus, and this is his wife who came to our conference. She was very impressed. And hopefully next year we'll be able to do a conference together with the president. So she was able to bring, I think, 12 VIPs to the European conference, and it was quite, and she's working together with them more and more. So uh, also, yeah, uh, Kolut spoke in the Her Story program, and uh, yeah, the Peace Curriculum, which we'll talk about later, I think, uh, was launched this year, and that was started with the intention of helping with um, the, uh, the Middle East. So the future. Well, let's see, Will, what are we going to do? These are our themes, of course, and uh, peace and society through true love. So we'll continue to help Morocco and Turkey and follow up on our humanitarian help. And uh, we'll revive the Middle East Women's Network. Zoe's trying all the time to do something. Uh, it's a little difficult because she doesn't have the budget from Japan anymore, but that's why we're trying to work with people this is the doctor from the Islamic hospital that's coming in Jordan, and uh, so we'll have that. And she wants to create a woman's corner on the Middle East general website. So uh, she want yeah, we're in the process of making a website for the Middle East, and she wants to do what we call the woman's corner. So and also inspire ownership and educate good environmental practices through the curriculum. So we want to do hands-on education. And uh, we're looking for finances. So, um, that's, right? so we need to develop membership. We don't really have a strong membership base in the Middle East. Lebanon has members. She, Hermine uh, Schelling is in charge of Lebanon. So she, uh, but like in Afghanistan and Jordan, we do social programs. So we're trying to find out how to make a membership base even though we're just helping others. So thank you very much. In Vienna, we work in Commission on Crime Prevention and uh, Social Justice. And uh, there are many, we did side events. We can do side events. They, uh, they need to be um, organized very well, so we have timing very early and we need to find somebody who will speak with us. You can see the Mrs. Mugangwa from, from Kenya. Uh, uh -huh. This lady, she was a representative of Kenya to United Nations in Vienna. So our desire is always to work with some representative of the governments. You know, this way we can introduce our project or civil society projects to the governments so they can support them. Because governments also receive, uh, have some budget and they need, if they don't know how, what to do with the budget, so it's somehow problem. So we can introduce and this lady, she's, she was working with the, with the bank system, the Mrs. Mugangwa. She, wo she was only one year here. Then we work also with youth. We invite always our representative of uh, Youth Association for Peace. Um, and they can also speak about their project and introduce their project to the governments. And afterwards we meet and we can speak with people they participated on our conference. We also invite uh, to listen. We, we, we invite all these government representatives of governments to listen to our side events. Mm -hmm. This is not so easy because many other organ or NGOs are doing side events and to promote their work in their respective countries. The next. Uh, in autumn, uh, th these conferences are uh, happening in the springtime. So next is happening in the in the autumn. You and oh, you, you can uh, this um, yeah. UNTOC is United Nations Transnational Organized Crime. This is also a big 
commission um, where governments um, somehow I listen to hours to these uh, to these meetings with the governments we can listen to some meeting of governments and they said the governments are going with bicycle and the crime uh, the the people they are doing crime they are driving this Ferrari mm -hmm. so very quick <laughs> so the, the people they they do like um, um, slavery modern slavery what we call yeah like misusing women and even young people to mm -hmm. work very uh, uh, without education they just work to to give us feeling that we are rich and we can buy by Amazon or somewhere everything yeah so this is a very big topic and we, we can discuss, we can listen to them in the autumn. Um, so next. Uh -huh. uh, the last two years I was chair of the Committee on Peace in Vienna uh, because the big, big issue is also uh, disarmament not only crime prevention, but also this moment in Vienna. In our Committee on Peace, we can invite people to, to promote the changing of thinking, that we are in the age when we have no enemy. Uh, even in the, in, the, um, create, in the creation, animals don't kill each other just because they hate each other. So we, like human, also have the knowledge to understand that we don't kill each other just because, just because. What is the problem? Yeah? So I was chairing this, and this man was giving us lecture, um, forgotten peace formula that edu uh, the peace education starts in the in the family. So we connect very much to the family, to education from father and mother. Sometimes organize also one side event where, where we promote the development or the use of technological possibilities to improve education in respective countries, especially in what we call underdeveloped countries or countries in development. Mm -hmm. It means uh, countries where refugees are coming to Europe that they can use their own capacity to educate their people and so we could we could we could promote projects from South Africa and uh, project from from even from Austria from uh, it's called Cinacolo project started in Italy how to um, encourage people to make meaningful life uh, without alcohol and without drugs. So the next, please. Aha, this is everything again just written, the points, how we work at the United Nations in form of, of constructive dialogues. We have exactly date when we can go there and attend and speak. So, Geneva is very, very uh, active. Uh, Caroline Hanchin, greetings from her to everybody of you. She is the chair of Committee on Status of Women, and they are working now very much with United, with representatives of United Nations in New York for the Commission on Status of Women that starts in, in March. Um, 9 and 10th of March, uh, they have uh, advocacy training from our uh, representative from Africa and from all over the world, about 49 uh, women meet together. And you can also read you this. Uh, Caroline just sent it all these all these points to us, so we can read later. Uh, she has now quite delayed sent uh, short video, uh -huh. and we have to find some slot for it, and okay. then we can show it. Yeah. It means shortening a break by five minutes or something. She is working very much with 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 VIPs, uh, 
Strumada is encouraging us to work with uh, first ladies, like women behind the men. Of course, men are present, but they co they come home, and women can also bring some topics if they follow what happened. So through conversation, uh, ladies can also support the topic, the issues of women, like protection, also for children, to listen to them, and. Um, what next? Yeah, so we work always in the same topic: how to make, uh, how to go beyond motherhood, beyond not separate motherhood, fatherhood, but bring them together like parents. In our world, if we have parents, so everybody can be satisfied. So this parenthood we promote even at the United Nations on the political level, like governments can serve us, like parents are taking care of mm -hmm. the nation. So in this way, we have not the feeling that we are losing something or we are in, in needs. Yeah, if we have needs, it can be satisfied. And honestly, we don't need so much to be satisfied. Just little space and possibility to enjoy or to develop our capacities. Yeah? So this is our work at the United Nations based on the local chapters. We can invite them, and we can give them voice to speak at the United Nations to the governments. On other side, we also study what our governments is doing and then try to reach them, and, but this is not so easy. Thank you very much. miracle for me <laughs> that I could be here and because of Elizabeth so she made it possible yes and uh, anyway just I'll have to speak quickly uh, because of nine minutes that's why if you stop understanding me just let me know <laughs> I'll try, try to slow down so basically we still follow the three main directions uh, for promotion of moral and family values in the cultural and the religious cooperation charity projects yeah in different fields but uh, I also would like to share with you that, of course, uh, because uh, still, unfortunately, yeah, for us, all of us, there's still a war is going on. So many, many sisters of our region, not only from Russia, but from many countries of our region, uh, we keep doing conditions every month. So starting from February 22 uh, till now, so every month for 21 days, many, many sisters join. And we feel it's very important because we, the main desire of all people and also uh, in Russia, it's for peace. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. People can stop dying mm -hmm. everywhere, especially uh, in Ukraine. Yeah, like that. Uh, so I would like to start with Albania. <laughs> yeah, actually they are being very very active. Yes, and they uh, yeah keep doing this wonderful projects. As you know, also use speech contest and uh, you, you already saw many beautiful pictures where they were invited yeah Cassia and, and they were invited uh, with some other sisters to TV even yeah to, to talk about these things and now they want to also continue and promote it more also through mass media and uh, the, the topic this year will be like my voice is uh, uh, like my, my voice is yes yeah, so, so will bring change yeah something like that yeah and this is very inspiring and of course they also want, want to continue uh, this uh, peace youth peace academy yeah so based also on the Soviet federation curriculum and they are also they're already cooperating with many vips yeah and many people so they would like to expand it more and this is very very precious also a small advertisement for albania our daughter was also with her husband volunteers there. So if you have young people who want to have great experience of working, even then they are allowed to go to schools. We were so surprised, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why, yeah. So you can send your young people to Albania, okay. <laughs> and they will have great experience of volunteering there. Yeah. So also, I would like to mention uh, Armenia. Uh, so they haven't registered yet, but they are being active. Unfortunately, you already heard that Armenia also, they had war with Azerbaijan yeah, so several, a few years ago. But uh, this year also something bad happened and in Karabakh area, so people living in Armenia for 
like Armenian people living in Karabakh for many, many years. They were all kicked out from their places. And then, uh, yeah, so and, and they basically, most of them came just to Yerevan. And then these people had nothing. So some of them couldn't take even clothes or baggage. They just had, because of very, very limited hours you were given to leave. And that's why uh, also we are very grateful to Austria because they really made this wonderful project. They made a charity concert yeah, for Armenian people to support those people uh, yes, who came from Karabakh and also uh, Russian people uh, collected. Yeah, just we collected donations and we sent also to Armenia. And that's why so you can see this uh, sewing machines also were bought and some people they can also sue not only for their families and have some income to live but they can help other families so this kind of cooperation and also with the help from russia so they could buy many food products like, like not packages with the federation logo and they're still giving them to people so they really hope to yeah, support them more and this is very inspiring and uh, Women's Federation Latvia, they also, they don't have many members, Women's Federation members, but they have been so stable. So they continuously doing very good projects in cooperation with some other uh, NGO, it's called Samaritana Society. So they uh, do wonderful projects for elderly people. And even coming with little children, you know that for elderly people, of course, they're happy for any care. But when some families come with little children, <laughs> this is very <laughs> special for them. Yes, yeah, so we also started like this in, in Russia many years ago, then we would come just with babies mm -hmm. <laughs> and we would do concerts or something and it was such a joy. Yeah, I think it's very precious that they continue this. And in Romania, so uh, Roxana was recently appointed as mm -hmm. Women's Federation President of Romania and they just started also some uh, meetings with women, so they are planning to hold also a reading club and cooking lessons and uh, programs on healing. So I think this is good. Yes, this is a good good start. Alexander wanted to come here, so, but they have some pro program now. So it, during this time, so hopefully next time she can join. And also I would like to share about some programs that we hold in Russia, but also some of them in, in Belarus also. Uh, but actually everything I say, this is not only about past. This is this is also future. <laughs> this is the same mm -hmm. because we just continue the same mm -hmm. projects, and we would like to hold just more and continue more programs on. Moral education, as you know, we do it not only for our members, but it's mainly not for members, but for, for the societies, this is kind of schools or colleges. Is it four already? Not five? <laughs> so, <laughs> five. Okay. Uh, yes, and actually what we really want to do, uh, we really want to now broaden this um, kind of... Uh, this. So we want to have more teachers. Yeah, We want to have more teachers who can do it well. But we would like to involve more young people, so that young people can give these lectures. Because I started giving these lectures when I was 26, uh, I looked like maybe 18, <laughs> because, because people thought I was a new classmate <laughs> when, when I came. And this is the best thing, when young people come and they have passion and they talk about such things, this is wonderful. This is, yeah, that's why... I was also thinking that even in your countries, I know in m many European countries, for example, it's not allowed even to come to school. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not allowed for us, for this kind of teachers, yeah? Mm -hmm. But maybe if some young person who graduated from the school comes to his school uh -huh. and says, I just love your school, our school so much, I just want to be useful for younger children, can <laughs> I just give some lecture on uh, pure love or whatever? Maybe. Maybe <laughs> this could be possible. That's what we also want to try to do in Russia. There's also colleges. And I'm also always moved by what uh, students write. And what we're also trying to do more now and spend more, so we cooperate with uh, different parental organizations. And this organization was introduced to us by Elizabeth, so this wonderful lady. <laughs> so they had this parent association of Moscow. And we already did several projects and programs together. And they even do some like TV program like that, and they invited us to talk about moral education. So we really feel this is hope, and this is what Maria also just mentioned. I really feel the best thing to talk about peace, to teach about peace, is when parents do this from baby level. They teach their children about peace, and even really what 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 is said in the family. So if in the family some parents they kind of say bad things about some other nation nationality. Even using some bad words or something like this, 
children know this, okay, that this nationality is bad, but if children teach babies even, yeah, people of all nationalities are good, I mean, I mean, all nationalities are good, there are good and bad people everywhere, yeah, but there are no evil nations, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I think there is hope, <laughs> that we can keep going. Anyway, programs on also for teachers and psychologists, and that what, what we did also is more uh, so that uh, children can be there. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> just jump thinking. And then, uh, oh, where am I going? <laughs> wrong direction, sorry. <laughs> I, did, okay, I went wrong direction, I was trying to do it quickly. Yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, it's not moving now. So we skip. <laughs> Anyway, this is also what we want to continue when we bring together uh, ensembles and children of many, many nationalities. And even, you know that, for example, Armenia and Azerbaijan, they can't even cooperate in any way, but on our festival, they stand on one stage. Uh -huh. <laughs> children stand from, on one stage. And we also, whenever we have projects, uh, Ukraine is always presented, their culture. So we have Ukrainian songs or dances, something like that. Yeah. Mm. And then uh, this will be already soon, in March, yes, I'll finish. <laughs> yes, this is when we bring families of different nationalities, and I want to do this program. I want to inspire you to do this program together on European level. We can do it. We already try to do it. What even online, it? I can explain. If I give a little more time, I can explain. <laughs> Would you give me no, no, one yeah. minute? <laughs> you must hear. Yes, sir. Can't we hear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this idea was taken from Mr. and Miss University. This is through parents' project that was held for many years. Yeah. I was participating in 1992. So when students from different nationalities gathered together, yeah, country represented by one boy, one girl, and they share their talents, they share what's inside. It actually, speech contest is included. It's part of this Mr. and Miss University. Unfortunately, that project stopped on the international level. I would be more than happy if we can revive it with Women's Federation because I was holding it myself. I know how to organize it from zero <laughs> to the stage. Yeah? So I would be more than happy if we, all countries, if we could cooperate and revive this project. It's a true parents project. But we did the same with families. I just took the idea, we implemented it with families. So since 2008, we keep holding this. So we even invite families of different, different nationalities. But because of COVID, we had to do it one time online. And it was very successful and it was international, at least for our region. Why don't we do it at least on European level? And we can show beautiful families from all of these countries. Can you imagine? And it's not easy, you know, not too difficult. So I would be more than happy if we do it together. And just last point maybe I want to show. Also, of course, we continue charity projects and actually many schools for all the main holidays, schools, school children or kindergartners, they draw very beautiful cards and related cards or, or even send their toys to elderly people. This is also very good. Yes, yes, and elderly people, they sleep with these toys. They, they put clothes on these toys. They talk to these toys. Yeah, very good. And then just one thing, because we created some uh, books uh, on moral education, it's uh, all in poems for children. And now some schools are already using them for, they call it lessons of kindness. So, and actually we started with help of Nitti and Angelica Sally from America. We translated one of these books into English, if someone is interested. So we could also share that maybe this can be used by Women's Federation or just for your communities. It's, it's in poems, how to behave, how to be good, how to develop a good heart. Yeah, okay, so I had to finish, but basically I could show, and also our St. Petersburg, just wanted to show a picture, St. Petersburg chapter, they couldn't register yet in the city, but they're very active, yeah, they're just helping homeless people, people in need, and yes, I'm very inspired by such mm -hmm. wonderful sisters. Thank you so much, sorry. Thank you very much.